Hello, everyone. Welcome to week nine of statistical analysis in public policy and management. So uh, this week, we're going to talk about confirmative factor analysis, uh, confirmatory factor analysis and stru structural equation models. So last week, we talked about exploratory factor analysis, in which case we had no previous knowledge about the relationship between latent variables and observed variables. In this week, we talk about confirmatory factor analysis. So in this case, we have already known the, the relationship between latent variables and uh, observed variables, because latent variables are those factors or the variables or the construct or, the, or our interest, um, which cannot be directly observable. We have to use other observable variables to measure it. Uh, take uh, the example of IQ again, uh, we cannot directly measure IQ because I, IQ is not directly observable, but we can use lots of different IQ tests or other exam to some degree to measure uh, IQ. So in this week, uh, in, in this week of, confirmatory, of confirmatory factor analysis and uh, structural equation model, we call those factors uh, latent variables. And for those observed variables, we call those indicators. So all those axes are indicators and all those factors are latent variables. So assumptions of CFA are quite similar to assumptions of EFA. So for example, the continuity of variables, uh, the sufficient sample size, and the composite of variance, which means uh, for each variable, they have a variance uh, shared among other variants, uh, which will reflect latent variables. And they also have the variance of themselves. So uh, that's the assumption. Um, but there is still some difference between CFA and EFA. Uh, like we mentioned before, in EFA, we have no previous knowledge about the relationship between uh, indic indicators and latent variables. So we have to uh, construct something to build uh, a certain structure. Uh, we need to select a set of axes to measure uh, the latent variables. After that, we use a Chrome Bush Alpha to test whether such, uh, whether such uh, establishment, establishment is good or bad. Uh, and often we can find some cross-factor uh, indicators, uh, which means a indicator and X can reflect multiple different factors, uh, different latent variables. But in CFA, uh, that is not the case. Uh, at least we do not desire to see one X to reflect two different constructs. So in this case, uh, we see the equation here, one X only reflect one factor, one latent variable. So we can see the difference of the goal. The goal of EFA is to explore or to determine uh, the underlying factorial structure of a measurement instrument. So we have so many axes, we try to determine which set of X uh, will construct, will build a con or another, a certain concept F. Okay? But in CFA, we already know this set of X will measure F. But, so the goal is to test whether such construct is, is good or bad. So the fitness of this structure. So in order to evaluate CFA, we also need to look at the factor loadings. Um, factor loadings in EFA usually reflects the correlation between the factors and the axis, but the factor loadings in CFA are just regression coefficients, those alpha ij's. They are not correlations anymore uh, because the, the, there exists some correlation between different latent variables. And we try to evaluate CFA uh, also by uh, a square multiple correlation. Uh, this is explains the percentage uh, of X uh, explained by the factor explained by latent variable, uh, which is the same as communalities in our previous study. We also need to test the construct reliability, which is also uh, same as EFA. We need to check the Kronbach alpha. If it's greater than 0 0.07, it is a good construct. We will say our knowledge is good. Such structure is, is a good fit. So after that, we're going to uh, talk about structural equation models. So um, in previous study, in previous uh, classes, we talk about you know, PCA, EFA, CFA, all about those things, about uh, the construct in, for independent variables, for all those axes. Why do we try to reduce dimension? We try to explore the construct, or we, we have already known the construct, we try to test the validity of this construct. They are all you know, dealing with those axes. What if why the response is still not observable? 
we still similarly, we need to build a CFA model for Y and that is called structural equation model. So for all unobservable models, uh, unobservable variables, either dependent variable or independent variables, we use CFA, we use other observed variables to measure unobserved variable, latent variables. So this is called measurement model. And the relationship between latent dependent variable and latent independent variable is called structural model. So if measurement models are linear models and structural models are also linear models, we call it a linear structure relationship notation or linear structure relationship uh, relation models. Um, the abbreviate will be Lithrail, okay? Uh, this is also uh, the software name, um, you know, um, well, the name of the first software to deal with structural equation model. So how can we, you know, uh, express or how can we display such relationship? We already draw a graph called pass diagram to display such relationship. A pass diagram uh, consists of boxes, uh, which represent observed variables, uh, ovals, which represent latent variables, uh, one header arrows, which will reflect the relationship of dependency, and two header arrows, which will represent the correlation between variables. So this is an example of a structural equation model. In this model, we have uh, four latent variables. Among the four latent variables, we have one dependent latent variable. We have three independent latent variables. This dependent uh, latent variable is called endogenous variables. Those three independent latent variables, we call it exogenous variables. So for independent variables, uh, see social factors, intellectual factors and motivations, we all have you know, observed variable access here to measure those three structures, okay? Three construct. And for dependent variable performance, we also have three measurement client satisfaction, superior satisfaction, and project completion to measure the job performance. So in this case, uh, the true job performance is not directly observable. We try to use three different metrics to measure this performance. So this performance is different variable. Depends on what? Social skills. Uh, it's difficult to measure a social skills. Uh, you know, how well we communicate with others, right? It's, kind of difficult. So in this example, uh, we choose two different psychological tests to, uh, to measure the social skills. Uh, probably everyone know about, you know, the personality test, then there might be one of the tests or some other tests, right? And for the intellectual uh, skills, it is also difficult to measure. And we use, you know, the education level. So years of education, uh, if you got a bachelor degree, you probably have four years of education. If you have a graduate degree, master's, you may have you know, six years or five years uh, education after high school, right? And others. And also we may use IQ test to reflect the intellectual property. Um, not, not the property, okay? Not other, not that intellectual property, the intellectual skills, okay? The last one will be the motivation. Um, are you motivated to, to work, right? Hours of uh, training and hours of work per week. Uh, they, they might be also, you know, a good indicator. I'm not sure yet when you see the result, there might be some indicator to measure the motivation. If someone want to spend lots of hours working at a week, uh, they may, you know, it depends on proactively or uh, passively, but they usually reflect the motivation to work, right? Oh, how many hours they want that they spend on training, on job training also, you know, uh, can to some degree reflect the motivation. So we see, we use all those ob observed variable to measure independent variable. And we'll also use other set of observed variable to measure dependent variable. And those structure, the X and the latent variables are determined by previous knowledge. It's no longer exploratory anymore. So those are CFA model, CFA model, CFA model, CFA model. And the, the relationship between those, you know, uh, latent variables are structural model, okay? So the combination of both uh, is called structure equation model. 
So here's a mathematical illustration uh, of the graph here. We can see uh, psychological test X is a linear combination of those F, those little variables. Similarly, intellectual skills, motivation, they also a linear combination of the latent variables. And we can see for each X, they only have one you know, uh, latent variable here, no longer multiple, no longer multiple Fs in EFF, EFA, okay? And we see the dependent variable, uh, the dependent latent variable, uh, uh, is also, uh, you know, measured by uh, satisfaction score, three different satisfaction score. Okay, and we can see the structure uh, equation model. Uh, performance is equal to beta one. You know, this is you know latent variable uh, not observable, and social skills, intellectual skills, and motivation, all three independent variable uh, are all not you know not all of them uh, not you know neither of them can be uh, observable. Okay, so we can see this is the structure models. Okay, so after we build this model, this fancy model, uh, how to solve it is a you know a mathematical statistical question, and it's it is beyond the scope of this class, and we only have you know one class to introduce structure equation model. I have to you know uh, cut off a lot of content here, so uh, we just let the computer uh, SPSS almost uh, to deal with that. Right. So after that, SPSS will give us a result, give us a uh, set of coefficients uh, to reflect the model. And how can we evaluate uh, SEM? Uh, unfortunately, um, different software will use different algorithm to solve those coefficients. And um, the way to solve S SEM is different from the way to solve, uh, you know, OLS, linear, uh, linear regression model. Because in solving linear regression model, uh, we, we get those coefficients by minimize the difference between predicted y with actual y to minimize the difference there. But for structure equation model, we try to minimize the variance, uh, the difference, you know, uh, between the, the difference between the variance of sample and uh, the difference between uh, uh, the variance of sample and the variance of the, our model. So we use maximum likelihood estimator instead of you know least square estimator. So in that case, uh, different software will give you different values of coefficients. So uh, it is so every time you try to evaluate an SEM model, you have to uh, specify what kind of software you are using, and uh, as well as the results. And we no longer, because of that nature, uh, we need to use multiple indicators and uh, multiple metrics to evaluate the model instead of just one metric. Okay, so, so typically we will use four different um, metrics to evaluate SEM. And in most cases, uh, all four metrics should be consistent in the result. The first one is a chi-square test. So after uh, you conduct SEM in almost, um, it will give you a result of chi-square test. Um, typically, we want chi, uh, you know, in previous models, we want chi-square test to be significant. Um, but in evaluation of SEM, we want it to be not significant because the non-hypothesis means there exists no difference between, uh, you know, the model variance covariance and the observed sample uh, variance covariance, which means our SEM uh, tr truly reflect uh, the variance in the uh, population. So uh, that is not hypothesis. We, we do not want to reject it because if we reject this not hypothesis, there means there exists difference between our model. That means our model fails, okay? So, first indicator would be a uh, first metric would be the chi square test the second one would be called comparative fit index it is kind of you know um uh, just know it's kind of a, a fit test you don't need to know the details about the, the statistics behind because it's still a fancy variance over a degree of freedom but we just only we just need to know if uh, say if i is greater than 0.9 it will be a good fit uh, similar to the T, uh, TLI index. So if those two index greater than 0.9, it uh, means our SEM model is a good fit. Um, the last one would be called root mean square error of approximation. Um, this one, uh, we need this number to be less than 0.05, uh, which will reflect a good fit. 
uh, please be noticed that this 0 0.05 ha has no relationship with uh, confidence level because uh, this is not uh, a confidence level test and this is a statistics so a statistic is different you know, from the you know uh, the significance level confidence level thing okay so we need just need to remember those threshold so we want chi square test to have significance greater than 0 0.05 we want uh, CFI and TLI to be greater than 0.9, and we want the RMSEA uh, to be less than uh, 0 0.05. So uh, usually those four metrics should be consistent. Uh, if you know all four uh, criterion are satisfied, uh, we can say the SEM model uh, is a you know a, a good fit. Okay, uh, so. As we talked, uh, as we discussed uh, before, SEM model is not uh, a prediction model. Uh, we are not uh, minimizing the difference between the predictor Y and actual Y, because Y is not observable, right? Mentioned uh, in the in the couple of slides before, uh, the the whole structure is like Y is not observable. Uh, you know, the dependent variable is not observable. Independent variable are not observable. So we all need to use observed measure, observed variables to measure those um, right-hand side, left-hand side equations. Because of that, we only uh, we can only refer the, the causal relationship between dependent variable and independent variable. We cannot get the accurate value of dependent variable and, and independent variable. And the accurate value is kind of meaningless because they are measured by other things. There exists some measurement error and system, a system error there, right? So SEM model is for relationship, is to confirm the relationship between the endogenous uh, variable and exogenous variables, okay? And it cannot be used for prediction. And different software will give different coefficients in SEM. So every time you give me a, you know, you give your audience uh, the, you know, the CFI, TLI, all the things, uh, you have to give them the software you are using because different software will give different chi-square value or different CFI value, different TLI value due to different algorithms to solve those coefficients. And, you know, like I said, uh, because of those reasons, uh, only one indicator might be problematic. You need more metrics, uh, multiple metrics to evaluate the whole model, the fitness of the model, okay? And as we mentioned, it's not good for prediction. It's only uh, workable for the inference. Okay, that's it, thank you. And uh, I, before I end this uh, video, I have to make some apologies. Uh, Due to you know, you know, I'm using a Mac, and unfortunately, SPSS uh, does not, you know, especially SPSS AMOS module uh, does not support Mac, and I, unfortunately, I check the desktop in my office. Uh, there, it is not equipped with any uh, audio or video equipment, and uh, so in my other two videos, those two are kind of you know silence video clips. So I, I recorded two other videos to teach you how to uh, use AMOS to get the result of CFA and SEM, but no audio. So it's not your computer's problem, okay? Those are two videos without any sound, okay? If you have any, if you have any other question, uh, feel free to send me emails. Okay, that'll be it.